All right, so now moving on to number six, something I want to do is I want to be able to get like terms in radical form. So my first instinct is I'm going to break down 12. I break down into 12 into 4 times 3, and 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. And 18 can be broken down into 9 times 2, and then 9 can be broken down to 3 times 3. So then I'm going to have 2 square root 3 plus 2 square root, well, all of my primes in there, so it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3, minus 4 square root 3 times 3 times 2. All right, well, now I get to decide who gets to come out. So I have a 3 come out, and I have a 2 come out, and then that's it for now. So then I'm going to have 2 square root 3 plus, well, a 2 times 2, because a 2 did come out, and then I have a 3 still left inside minus 4 times, well, I had a 3 come out, and I had a 2 left inside. Now let's just simplify. 2 square root 3 is still the same, but 2 times 2 is 4 square root 3, and then 4 times 3 is 12, and I still have my square root 2. I see that these are the same like radicals, so I can add them. So I get 6 square root 3 minus 12 square root 2, and that is my final answer. All right, moving on to number 7. Number 7... I'm going to have to use a property called distributive property. That means that this term has to go to every single term. So my first time, I have square root 5 times 2 square root 5. Well, who's on the outside of my house? I have a 2 on the outside and nothing else. And then I have two 5s on the inside. Then on my second one, I have square root of 5 times negative 3. Well, I have a negative 3 on my outside and a square root 5 on my inside. If I were to look at this, I know that my 5's can come out. So then I'm going to have 2 times 5 minus 3 square root 5, and 2 times 5 is simplified to 10 minus 3 square root 5. And that's your answer. Nothing else can be combined, and that's the most simplified you can get. Now number 8. Number eight's a little bit special in the fact that I have this little two here. That means there's two of them, meaning when I have four minus three i squared, it's really saying four minus three i times four minus three i. All right, well, now I'm going to have to do something called FOIL, which you have your first terms. So four times four is 16. Then you have your outside terms which four times negative three i, don't forget that negative right there. All right, four times negative three i is a negative 12 i. Then, since I'm done with that, I go on to negative three i times four, which is another negative 12 i. And then I have a negative three i times a negative three i. Well, two negatives make a positive. Three times three is nine, and i times i is i squared. I know from previous lectures that i squared equals negative 1. All right, so I can combine these guys. So I have 16. Negative 12i minus a 12i is going to give you negative 24i. And then I'm just going to replace that i squared with a negative 1. So I have a plus 9 times negative 1. Then, more simplified, I have 16 minus 24i minus 9, because negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. And then I have 16 minus 9. Well, I can simplify those two. 16 minus 9 equals negative 24i plus, oh, here's my i, plus 7. If you wanted to write it 7 minus 24i, that is okay too. They are the same thing. But that is your answer. So you should have gotten one or the other. Now, moving on to number nine. Number nine is the exact same thing, right? We're going to FOIL. Except, what do I notice? It's my conjugate. My conjugate means that these signs are opposite. So something's going to have to cancel out. Three times three is nine. And then three times negative two i is negative 18 i. Then I'm going to go positive 2i times 3, which is a positive 
six i, right? What am I thinking, nine? That's actually not the case. It's not nine, it's a positive, it's a negative six i, it's three times negative two i. All right, so then I have a positive six i from positive two i times three, and then I'm going to do it in positive two i times a negative two i, which is a negative four i squared. Okay, so let's simplify. These guys I can see, they can cancel out. They'll cancel out each other. So then I'm gonna get nine minus four i squared, but I know i squared equals negative one, so I'm just gonna replace that. Well, negative four times a negative one gives you a positive four, and nine plus four is indeed 13. So that would be your answer. There's no more i's, there's no more simplifying. It is just number 13. And lastly, number 10. Number 10 is all about rationalizing. This guy is too radical for school. He's too cool for school, doesn't want to be in the bottom. Well, that's okay. I just need to be able to get him to the top. And by doing that, I'm going to multiply by a fancy one. Remember, this is just a fancy one. So it's square root of two over square root of two. Well, let's just multiply. Fractions, we multiply straight across. So we have three times square root of two. On the outside, I have a three. On the inside, I have a square root of two. And according to my rules, on the, in the denominator, when I have a square root of two times the square root of two, these guys are gonna cancel out. Well, do we wanna know why? It's gonna be square root of two times two, because two, twos are in my house, and who gets to come out? It's gonna be a two. So on the bottom, I'm just gonna have a two. The answer is gonna be three squared root of two over two, and then you are done.